Welcome to the Brindle Twig YouTube channel. I'm Megan from Sew and Tell Australia and in today's tutorial we're going to be sewing the number 61 pattern, the flutter sleeve sweatshirt dress. This pattern is designed for knits, either a lightweight jersey knit if you want to make it a more of a tea style or something a little bit heavier like a French terry if you want more of a sweatshirt style. This pattern goes from zero to three months right up to a five or six T. I'm going to be making the 6T today for my daughter because she loves a good dress and who doesn't love flutter sleeves. So I'm going to be making that one. But first, let's take a look at a few other things that we need. So we're going to be needing a sewing machine. I'm actually going to do the entire thing on my sewing machine. You can use an overlocker or a serger and I normally would. However, because I know not everybody has a serger and it can be really hard to find tutorials out there for sewing machines, sewing knit knit fabrics. I'm going to be using my machine so you can see that you absolutely can sew with knits with your machine. So I've got my normal sewing machine. Some of the other things that we will be needing are I prefer to use clips when I'm sewing with knit fabric. It just doesn't mark the fabric as well. So I've got some wonder clips here as well as pins. You can use pins if you like and there might be a couple of points where I may use pins. But I've got my pins. You can either use scissors or a rotary cutter to cut the pattern out. I'm generally a rotary girl, but you know, you always need your scissors as well. I've got my matching thread. I'm using a Guterman here, but you can use a Rassant or any thread that you like basically. Now, one of the things that's important if you're going to be using a normal sewing machine is you should be using the correct needles. So I'm going to be using the Schmetz uh, stretch needles. So that's just important if you have a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle because they have a different head on them. So they've got a ballpoint head, which means that when it goes through the fibers, it kind of pushes them aside and goes through the weaves of the fabric instead of piercing straight through. So it's important to make sure you've got the correct needles in. And then when I'm doing my top stitching, I'm going to be using a twin needle. So you'll get to see some twin needling as well, which is always nice. Um, you can also get a walking foot for your machine if you have one. I don't have one for this model because this is an older model, uh, but my newer machine, my more modern machine, which needs to go to the doctor, I do have a walking foot for, and it can really help when sewing with knits. And what it does is it grabs the fabric from the top and the bottom more evenly. So when it's fed through the machine, it's fed through at a more even pace, meaning that you're less likely to get any kind of waviness or problems with your fabrics. So that is always a good one to have on hand is a walking foot if you can. So for the materials, you need either a cotton lycra or a jersey. If you're doing more of a tea style, if you want something a little bit more lightweight, or if you're going to be wanting something a little bit heavier, more of a sweatshirt style, you can use something like a French terry or a um, fleece or something. So I'm using a cotton lycra. I've got this super cute fabric that I got from So Unique Fabrics. Uh, I had it, I've had it in my sash for mm, a couple months now. So it's probably time that it's seized the light of day and it's coming into summer. So I'm going to be making the short sleeve sweat dress, sweat shirt dress style um, so that my daughter can get a little bit more wear out of it with maybe a cute pair of leggings. So I'm gonna take you over to my cutting table. I use a projector for my cutting out pieces, but it's the same whether you're using a projector or paper pattern pieces. You should have already cut out your pattern pieces to the size that you need. And then I'll show you just a couple of things that we do when we cut to make sure that we get it right. So let's go over and get started. I've loaded up my pattern pieces on my projector. So I've unchecked everything except for the five to six T. So I've got that all done here. And now I'm just gonna start cutting out my pieces. So as these are unfolded on mine, which is always nice, I can lay my pieces out just straight. And I'm not gonna worry so much about pattern placement on this one, because it's all a pretty even pattern. So all I'm gonna do is lay out my pattern with the best use of space. Pop it down nice and flat. And then I can get my rotary cutter and cut out my fronts. As with all patterns, it's very important that you do notch your patterns. So I'm gonna make sure I mark this notch here. And then it's also got a center front notch as well. So make sure I notch that. 
And that's my front piece all cut. I'm gonna have to go along. I've got a couple. I need to change my rotary blade. But it is looking very good and I can go on and cut the rest of the pieces. All your pieces should be cut out now. So you should have a front, cute, a back. Then we've also got our two sleeve pieces, which you've either done short or long sleeve. Then I've chosen to do a contrasting color or fabric for my neckband and flutters. So I've got this cool purple faux glitter look for my flutters. And so I've got two flutters and my neckband. So I'm gonna thread out my machine in the chosen color that I've got for my thread and making sure I've changed out my needle to my stretch needle so that I know I've got the best needle in for the project. And from there, we can start with step two. Step two is to hem the front and back of the dress. So I've got my two front and back pieces here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm probably going to take this over to the iron and just fold the hem over about half an inch or 13 mil, just so I've got a bit of a memory crease there. And it makes it a little bit easier when I zigzag stitch this across. So you can either twin needle this hem down or zigzag stitch. I'm choosing to zigzag stitch for this portion. I will twin needle around my neckline, but for my hem, I'm going to zigzag stitch. So I'm gonna take this over to my iron, give it a really good steam press to get that memory press in there, and then I'll bring it back and we'll zigzag it down. Being a curved hemline, I've just tried to press it, and it's, it's being a little bit tricky. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm actually going to pin it. Now this is an instance where I will use pins so I'm just going to go along just to make sure that I've got it nice and just pop some pins along here so that I know that I've got a really clean hemline. I've gone and pinned all the way along here and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sew it from the wrong side so I can make sure I'm catching all those edges. And because it is a zigzag stitch, so it's gonna appear the same on the top as the bottom, I can sew it from the wrong side. If we were doing a twin needle, we wouldn't be able to because we'd get the two needle, the two stitches on top with a zigzag at the back. But because we're doing a single zigzag, I can sew from the opposite side, meaning that I've got a little bit more control over how it looks. So you will also, because it's a curved hemline, get a little bit of, um, roping or you know it doesn't quite fold over as perfectly as we'd like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very slightly stretch this as I stitch and then once I'm done I'm going to give it a super super good steam iron which will help shrink those fibers back to make it sit properly so I'm going to take this to my sewing machine which I've loaded up with my colors I've got my stretch needle in I've got the zigzag set I've and I've got my stitch length set to, I think a two, two and a half, and my stitch width set to three. So let's see how we go. All right, we've got our hem done here. As you can see, it's a little bit wavy, but what I'm gonna do is take that over to my iron. I'll give that a really, really good steam press and that should help shrink the fibers back. And then I just need to do the other side. Just to show you, I gave this a really good press on my steam iron and it's looking much, much better. There's a couple little waves. That's mainly where I did sort of muck up a little bit with the hem. Um, it folded over a little bit, but you know, that's okay. It's for my daughter. She'll love it regardless. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can repeat it to the back side. The next thing we need to do is hem our sleeves. So you might note that there is this funny little sort of cutout or funny shape that's at the end of the sleeve. When I first started sewing, I was really confused by that. But why it's there is because when you fold it back on itself, that little cutout or triangle or angle is the angle of the rest of the sleeve. So it gives you basically the you know amount that your sleeve should be hemmed at. So that is always very handy. So always make sure you cut out those angle pieces where they say I'm going to give this a really good steam iron to give it a press then I will put some pins in it and I'll do my zigzag stitch across there as well. I've pressed, I've pinned, now it's time to zigzag both pieces 
so that we have some lovely hemmed sleeves. Now that we've got everything hemmed, the next step is to place your front and back pieces together. So you can either put your front piece right side up or your back piece right side up, but you're going to grab your coordinating piece and then do it uh, right side down so that you end up with right sides together. So you're matching up your shoulder notches or shoulder seams like so. I'm going to pop a couple of clips in. along here on both sides and then I'm just going to zigzag stitch with the same stitch same settings that I used on my hem I'm going to use on my shoulder seams so one of the good things about using a zigzag stitch on a knit fabric is that you don't actually have to worry about the edges or the seams fraying which is an issue with woven fabrics but if I just use the same seam allowance using a zigzag stitch instead of my serger, I'm not going to get frayed edges. I've done both those seams and as you can see from the front, yes you do get different in terms of how it looks on the inside and it's not quite as neat a finish as a serger uh, I can make those zigzags a little bit closer together so I'm not getting quite as far between my stitch lengths but in terms of functionality really you know a, a serger is lovely and if you are going to use it all the time and sew with knits all the time absolutely worth their weight in gold getting a serger but if you don't sew with knits a lot and you just want to have a bit of a dabble you can absolutely use your sewing machine as well so yeah now that we've got our front and back pieces together we've hemmed the sleeves we've hemmed the bottom of our dress it's time to prepare our flutter pieces to start the gather, what we're going to do is sew a basting stitch all the way along the curved edge. So not the straight edge, the curved edge. We're actually going to leave the straight edge uh, alone. We're not hemming it because it's a knit fabric. Like I've mentioned, it doesn't fray. So we are able to leave that raw. So what we need to do is get a basting stitch about a quarter of an inch in from the edge or six mil. And what we're going to do is use that to gather our flutters to put on our dress. So I've changed my stitch length back to zero, or sorry, my stitch width back to zero, and then I'm popping my machine onto the longest stitch length that I can. And I'm now going to sew all the way down. I've sewn that basting stitch all along there. Now I've left the tails quite long so that I have something to pull. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other side as well and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to gather them. For the next part of step four, you will need to get your dress. And I've just got it right sides down so I can see my notches, but we will place the flutters um, right sides together. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to match them to my notches. So I'm getting my bobbin thread and I'm slowly going to pull it as, as it gathers. I'm going to push the gathers down. You can actually tie a knot in one end if you want to. I do sometimes, sometimes I don't because I try to gather from both ends but in this instance I'm going to tie a knot in one end and what I'm going to do is just as I'm pulling that bobbin thread I'm going to feed the gathers to the other end. And what we're aiming for is we want to be able to have our flutter between these two notches. I've almost got my gathered fluttered sleeves to where I want, just a little bit more I think. And then I'll be able to make sure that I've copied it to the other side as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that gather. It's a little bit longer than the notches, but by the time we sort of put it all into the seams, it'll be okay. It's really important when doing gathers to take your time. I think gathers always look nicer when you've 
taken the effort and made the time to make sure they're even and uneven gathering can look quite funny particularly around the waistline so taking your time to make sure you've got nice even gathers really does make a world of difference so I've done one I'm going to do the other and then we'll attach them I've gathered both my pieces now so I can start to attach them to my bodice what I've done is I've popped a pin just where my marks are so that it's easier to see from the front side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my flutters right sides together and I'm going to line it up and it might end up being a teeny tiny little bit over but that's okay and start to pin it now like I said before with how important it is to get them even it's important to make sure they stay even while you're sewing them down. So I'm going to pop this in. And then what I'm going to do is get my clips and clip it along here so that I've got my gathers still nice and even so that when I sew my basting stitch to keep them down they should hopefully stay nice. I've clipped all that down now and made sure that all my raw edges are together. So I'm going to take that over to my machine. Well, I'll bring my machine back over here. And what I'll do is I'll just continue a basting stitch along here just to hold it down because we do need to attach the sleeves as well. So I'll do this for the other side and then baste it down and then I'll show you how we attach the sleeves. I've attached my flutters with the basting stitch and it's all starting to look very, very cute. I can't wait to finish this one. Step five is attaching our sleeve pieces. So if you get your sleeve pieces and uh, if you haven't marked your middle, just fold them in half and find the middle. I like to pop a pin in my middle so I know where it is. Do that on both pieces. Now what we're going to do is attach our sleeves to our garment. So with our sleeves right side down, we're going to find the middle or the shoulder, the shoulder notch and line up our center point with our shoulder notch and pop a clip in it. Then we're going to bring our edge around pop a clip here and then I always like to just do sort of the three main points the start the middle and the end clip and then what I do is I go along and pop in a few extra clips just as I ease it around to make sure that I've got it nice and evenly spread because nobody likes a bulky shoulder or a bulky sleeve so it's probably even more important because we've got the gathered flutter in there so if you just go around making sure you've got it nice and even sort of feed it around the sleeve or ease it around the sleeve sleeve head now we see we've got this so what I'm going to do is put it through the machine I'm going to do a zigzag stitch again this time I'm going to try a slightly smaller zigzag stitch so that I've got my stitches a little bit closer together and hopefully they won't be quite as gappy as the other ones but the most important thing is making sure you've got your three or your two raw edges here and then three raw edges here so you've got your garment your flutter and your sleeve and go from there it's all starting to come together now. I think my daughter is going to love it. I'm really happy with the purple faux glitter. I think I chose that really well. It's picking up a lot of the purple and even the darker blue hues in here. So that's going to look really good. You can top stitch this if you want to. Top stitch the sleeve down so you would push the seam towards the main part of the garment and you can top stitch it down with either a twin needle or a zigzag stitch. That will just help keep the seam a little bit flatter against the, the shoulder and it will sort of help it sit a little bit better. But you should be fine just leaving it as well. So it's not mentioned in the pattern, but that's just a little tip from me. The next step is step six. So step six is where we put everything together and it starts to really look like a dress. To get step six started, you need to turn your garment inside out. So you've got your right sides together. 
And what you're going to do is line up your side seams. So you want to make sure you've got your rights together, right sides together. And we're going to clip all the way down, matching up our seams as we go. I like to always make sure I've got my under seam, my underarm seam as close to together as possible. I just really like when they're together. So I nearly always start with putting a clip here and then I will sort of go from there in terms of clipping it for the rest of the way. So start at the top, clip all the way down the sides so that they match up on both sides and then we can put it through our machine. Sewn down both my sides, it's looking good. I've done a bit of a tidy up of all the threads so it's a little bit easier to see. Now the last thing that I'm going to do before we move on to our neck band, this actually is in step eight in the pattern, but I'm going to do it now seeing as we're already here. What we're going to do is just pop a couple of stitches along here to secure our side seams. So all I'm going to do is with a straight stitch and I'm going to make it probably a oh, stitch length of about two. Yep straight stitch and I'm just going to do maybe an inch worth of sewing just to really secure that hem there. So that's all I need to do and then we can do our neckband. Can you believe we're on to our final step already? This is such a quick sew, it really comes together so quickly even when not using the serger. So the final thing we need to do is our neckband, so let's get done with that. To attach our neckband we need our neckband piece and to start with what we're going to do is fold it over right sides together and just sew along that short side. Once you've sewn it together you're going to fold it in half lengthways, wrong sides together, so you've got your right sides out. The next thing is to quarter your neckband. Now it is so important to quarter your neckband. There are a few rules in sewing that are able to be broken. This is not one of them. To ensure you get a very even neckband attachment, quartering your neckband is the most important thing. I cannot stress it enough. I say in all my tutorials, I tell all my students, quartering your neckband is a non-negotiable. So as long as you make sure you pin it all down, you should be pretty right. Now the bonus of having already marked our center points on our garment is that we don't need to find those points. So we can put some pins in there just so we know where they are and we'll use those to find our corresponding quarters. So a lot of people think that the quarter point is going to be the shoulder seam, it's not. And this is why it is so so important to quarter your neckband. So I've got my two points together there and you'll notice when I put this pin in it's actually sitting a good inch in front of that shoulder seam. So if I was doing my neckband and I aligned my quarter to there, it would just throw out everything. So it's really important to make sure you quarter it properly because the final result on your garment is really quite profound, I think. All right, so now I can ouch, marry up my pieces, making sure they're right sides together. So I've got my back piece which is where the seam is and I'll do a clip for this. I like to clip first, I pin then I clip and then I'm aligning all my match points so that when I sew it on I'll get a nice even stretch.
This is the point where I also stick my label on. So I got some labels made through AliExpress. I just pop the size on there. So this is a 6T or 5 to 6T. And that just one tells my daughter where the back is, although she very much likes to wear her things backwards. And two tells me what size I've made because I make pretty much all the kids in my own clothing and I don't always remember what size I've made. So now I can take that under the machine. I've got my zigzag stitch set the way it's been and I am able to making sure I'm attaching this and gently stretching as I go so that I've got three raw edges aligned as I sew. Neck band all attached. And we have a very nice even attaching. The last thing I'm gonna do on my neck band, and it's not, not said in the pattern, but is I'm going to to, uh, top stitch or twin needle this down, especially because I haven't used a serger on this one. I think it's going to make a huge difference if I top stitch this one down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my twin needle and replace that in my machine and I'm going to twin needle it down. So I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna ch change it all over and then I will twin needle it and show you what it looks like. So that's the twin needling. I think it's made a big difference to how the actual garment and neckline is sitting. So I'm gonna give that a really good press on the iron just to make sure that it's all nice and flat and looking good. But like I said, I definitely think it's worth either top stitching this down or using your twin needle because it just makes such a big difference to the final look. And just like that, your flutter sleeve sweatshirt dress is done. It's a bit hard to keep this one all in frame because I did make the size for my daughter, but I'm so happy with how this turned out and hopefully it's showing you that you can get some good results with a sewing machine as well. Obviously a serger is going to give a much more professional look and probably lasts a little bit longer, but in terms of if you just want to have a try of sewing with knits, it's new to you, before you dive into getting a serger, you can absolutely still get some good results using your normal machine. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I will be doing some more videos, so I can't wait to share those with you. But for now, if you've got any questions, always make sure you pop them in the comments below. But I hope that you challenge yourself to make yourself a brand new flutter sleeve sweatshirt dress for someone you love. And yeah, it's just such a cute little pattern. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.